Today we're going to go ahead and take a look at a couple of different ways that we can create animations in our make code environment. Now the first example that we're going to look at is simply just using static images in order to be able to create a sequence of events that will basically get our animated image to appear on the micro bit. So one of the first things we're going to look at is just using some sort of image. And going back to our buggy codes, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create our jumping jack guy. So for our jumping jack guy, we're going to go ahead and give him his arms and his legs. And what we want to see is those arms going from that up position to the out position. So we'll create another LED here. And for our jumping jack with the arms stretched out, we'll go ahead and create this image as well. And from there, we should be able to get these guys to be animated. So we want it to basically alternate between the two images. So what we're gonna start off with is our arms in an up position going to an out position. Now the event handler plays a huge role in how this animation is going to work. So for example, if we go ahead and use an on start event handler, this is only gonna run one time when the program is initialized. So here we're gonna see that the arms are gonna go from that closed position to that out position. So we did get a brief animation, but it wasn't something that is going to continue. Now, another option is that we can modify this for a certain number of times, and we can do that by using our loop drawer. Here we can bring in a loop, and a loop is basically going to repeat anything that is inside of that green box. Now, in this case, we're gonna loop this four times. So if we put our on start with our repeat of four and then our animation, what we're gonna notice is we're gonna get those same two blocks to animate or repeat for a series of four times. Now you can change that repeat number to whatever you would like, but what if we want that to keep repeating forever and ever? If that's the case, we can go up to our basic drawer and instead of using an on start, maybe we wanna use a forever. So our forever event handler is going to repeat whatever is in those blocks over and over and over again. It's never going to stop unless we end the program. So in this case, when our program is initialized, you're going to see that now my jumping jack guy is going to be animated. But the downside to this one is that it's never going to stop unless we turn off or shut down the program. So one additional way that we can go ahead and use this sequence of events to happen or occur to create an animation is by using a while loop. So we've created two different methods of creating our animation. We did an on start and we started off with just using our jumping jack. So it's only going to occur two times. We then went ahead and put a repeat loop in there, which allowed that sequence to occur four times. We then went ahead and moved that over to a forever loop so that this would repeat forever. But we found out we can't get that to shut off. So the last way that we're going to look at as far as stacking images or repeating images is to use my loop drawer. And instead of using this repeat for four times, we're going to use this while true. Now your while true loop is basically creating an infinite loop using Boolean logic. True is always going to be true, which means anything that's placed within that block is always going to run. However, we can use an input such as a button A is pressed in order to change that logic. In this case, my forever loop will always be checking to see what is being run inside of it. The while loop will only run while the A button is pressed. So if I drop my code into that while loop, now we can go ahead and check if I hit the A button once, we should see the jumping jack sequence occur one time. Now, if we hold the A button down, the sequence of events is going to repeatedly loop until I release that A button. So these are just a few ways that you can use stacking of images in order to create that sequence of events in order to get your animation to occur. The next thing we're going to look at is how to use our image drawer or to scroll images in order to get our animations to occur on our microbit LED screen. <clears throat> the next thing we're going to look at is how to use the image drawer in order to display some sort of animation. Now an animation could not only be showing it where we have a sequence of events, but we can also scroll an image across the screen, which is also displaying a sequence of different images. 
So we're gonna take a look at these two different ways on how to use the image drawer to achieve some of these outcomes. Now under your advanced drawer in your make code, you're gonna notice that you now have this purple image drawer. And within that image drawer, we have this show image, a scroll image, and then we have a creating of an image or a big image. The big image is what I like to use because it does really get that nice scrolling action when you want something to kind of go across the screen from a right to left direction. So the first thing we need to do is start with some sort of event handler. And we're just gonna go ahead and use a forever loop for right now. And within that forever loop, we're gonna go ahead and let's do a scroll image first. So we're gonna go into our image drawer and I'm gonna grab this scroll image. Now with this scroll image, you automatically have a variable. Something we haven't talked a lot about at this time, but later on we will learn about variables and how we can create our variable and use that in place where this block is. For right now, we're just gonna go ahead and delete the variable. Now that we have this empty space, we need to go back into the image drawer and we're gonna go ahead and create this big image. Now that big image is basically displaying two microbit LED screens. So you can see that we have 10 LEDs across by five LEDs down. You also have an offset and an interval in milliseconds. So for this, we're gonna to try to get a sailboat to scroll across the screen. So we're gonna break this down into two different LED panels. The first panel is gonna be off to the left here. And we're gonna go ahead and just create a very basic sailboat. So we'll highlight those cells that we need to, and there's my sailboat. Now with an offset of one, what should happen is every 200 milliseconds, those pixels or LEDs are going to shift to the left one place or one column. And what happens when doing that is you get the effect that the sailboat is actually moving across the screen. The blank LEDs off to the right is what allows you to see that dead space once the sailboat reaches the end. If we were to replace that with just a regular image, we can see a big difference in the outcome of what our sailboat would do here. So let's go ahead and create just a regular image here. And we're gonna go ahead and scroll that image. And you're gonna see that now you have the sailboats pretty much touching one another. So you, you get kind of that blurred background. So we wanna make sure we use that big image in order to get that to occur. Now with that scroll image, we can speed it up by changing the intervals, but we can also change the offset here. And if I change the offset to let's say number two, what's gonna happen is it's gonna shift two LEDs every 200 milliseconds. So it looks like it's speeding up, but what's really happening is it's just shifting by two. Now, because our LED screen is only five LEDs across, if we change the offset from two to five, we're gonna notice that instead of getting a scroll, we're now going to get a blink. So just another way that you can actually get an image to blink is by using this scroll image. If that's going too fast, we can just simply change the intervals to every 500 milliseconds or every half second. And again, we can get that to blink. Now, just as we've done before, we can go ahead and create that first animation using that scroll image as well. So if I go back into my image drawer and grab another create big image, we can go ahead and create our jumping jack guy just as we did in that first example. Now on the first half of our LED screen, we're gonna go ahead and create our jumping jack guy with his arms up. And then we're gonna go ahead and create the second image with our guy having his arms in that outward position. So we'll go ahead and create that. And then from here, we can go ahead and drop that in. Now, if we scroll this image, so we're gonna go ahead and pull this guy out here and we're gonna scroll him. So we're gonna change the offset to one so that we can see the difference here. Here, we're gonna see that it's just gonna simply scroll across the screen. Now we do have set this to 500 milliseconds, so it's a little bit on the slower side, but you can get the idea of how we're getting him to scroll. If we change that offset from that one to that five, we should be able to get the same outcome we did before. It's just a different way of going about doing it. So these are just a couple different ways that you can use the images to stack them or scroll them in order to get that sequence of events that creates an animation within your program.